first thing, what was your reaction when you found out the news from the Chronicle that Texas and OU might potentially be leaving the Big 12? Well, it was shocking. And just on a personal level, <laughs> I was having a one-on-one -on -one interview with SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey when the news broke. Yeah. We were in a small room and I was trying to be polite and wasn't looking at my phone. And it broke and they ushered him out uh, after our interview. And uh, I looked at my phone and was like, oh, no. And so I had to go chase him down for comment. But, um, yeah, it was pretty shocking. That, you know, there were whispers kind of going on that maybe Texas and OU and maybe even others in the Big 12 weren't very happy with where the uh, potential negotiations were going to go with the TV rights. After 2025, there was talk of them maybe doing a, a longer agreement after 2025. And long story short, we're getting into an era with TV deals where almost the shorter, the better, because it allows these conferences to re-engage and renegotiate these contracts with TV providers. And the idea that the Big 12 is maybe going to sign a long deal didn't set very well, especially in this changing landscape with Texas and OU. Um, I did not realize that it was as far as we're not just unhappy, we're just going to leave the conference. Um, so I was pretty shocked when, I, when we saw that report. Well, so now we've gotten statements from Texas, OU, and the Big 12. And I think the, the key line that I saw from the Big 12 was our eight members. So is it pretty much official that Texas and OU is, is leaving? Yeah, it, they're gone. They're, they're good as gone right now. It's just a matter of when they join a conference. Now, it's going to be the SEC. Now, I say that because the last round of realignment uh, – was crazy. We thought Texas and Oklahoma, maybe Oklahoma State and Colorado were all going to go to the Pac-10. Obviously, that didn't happen. Not all those schools went. Right now, it looks like the SEC. These discussions with the SEC through any mediaries uh, on unofficial channels has been going on for about a year, apparently, according to sources we've talked to. And so it looks like it's a done deal. It's going to happen. But, you know, what if the Big Ten just goes up to OU in Texas and goes, hey, we have an even sweeter offer for you in the last minute. I'm not so certain that happens. But in realignment, money talks and anything could happen. But listen, it, it's it's SEC right now unless something completely crazy happens. And I mean, I know that there's a lot to it, but if they ended up joining the SEC, what does that do for this conference? Well, it makes it richer, number one. Number two, it strengthens their uh, stance with the expanded playoff going to 12 teams. It also strengthens their voice in the room of the NCAA, so to speak. So Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, spoke a lot last week about restructuring the governance of the NCAA. He doesn't want to break away from the NCAA, but it's very clear that they're trying to strengthen their voice and their pull within this room. So Maybe one day they do break off. I still think they will break off at some point. But this helps them off the field as much as, much as it does on the field. And I'm not sure if you want to go into this, but I, I think Texas and OU joining the conference actually helps Arkansas and teams like Arkansas and Mizzou a lot more than maybe some people are thinking right now. Well, yeah, explain that. Why, why do you think that that helps Arkansas? Well, I'm an Arkansas guy. I live in the state right yeah. now. I've followed Arkansas my entire life. So where does Arkansas recruit the best? Texas, right? Mm -hmm. That has been where they have gotten the, the, their best recruits pr primarily for the longest time. That's why they were so successful in the Southwest Conference. Not because they were getting the best players out of Texas, but they were able to get one of the best players out of Arkansas and maybe the second or third best players out of Texas. That has kind of dropped in recent years. It's kind of slowly dwindled, in my opinion, as far as the further and further away they've gotten away from the Southwest Conference. Now, one could argue maybe Texas A&M joined the conference maybe should have improved Arkansas's inroads to the state. Not necessarily. Now you've got a point here where you're having your chief rival from the SWC days joining your conference. And not only that, but you're getting Oklahoma, another school that recruits Texas heavily. So, for schools like Arkansas, Mizzou, which make their money on the recruiting trail by going into Texas, being able to sell to recruits, one, you're going to be going up against Texas every year. But two, you're telling the families, listen, you're probably going to be able to see us four, five, six times a year because we're going to be going to OU or they're going to come to us or Texas is going to come to us or we're going to go to Texas or we're going to go to a and or a and is going to come to us. If this has really made the SEC for Arkansas and Mizzou much more regional in nature 
like it was in the Big 12 and the SWC days. So I think this is a huge win for Arkansas. It's just a matter of Arkansas taking advantage of this opportunity and being able to capitalize on the recruiting trail because Arkansas's recruiting is only going to improve because of this move. And I think a lot of people are losing sight of that. We're going to get back to the days of Arkansas really picking up some big time kids like they did in the SWC days and even kind of in the late 90s when Arkansas was starting to come up in the SEC and get their footing. I like that because I think what most people are focusing on in terms of how it might hurt Arkansas is that, oh, well, it's just one more school that we're competing with for recruits. But you don't you don't agree with that? No, because they're already competing against Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and what Texas can offer uh, right now is that they're in the Big 12 and they can potentially win that conference every year. Now, they haven't been doing that, but that's what they sell recruits. And that's why they get top two, three recruiting classes every now and again. Arkansas, they sell, hey, we're probably not going to win our conference, but come here and play in the SEC. Why would a player do that when they go to Texas A&M or even Alabama? Now it's all these teams are in the SEC. Texas hasn't won the Big 12 in a while. What makes us think they're even going to be the fourth or fifth best program in the SEC? And the game is becoming more regionalized in the SEC. I think that's what's being lost. Everybody thinks that this is just the SEC branching out and getting bigger. Yes, but this regionalizes things so much more for Arkansas and Mizzou and even LSU to a certain extent, but especially Texas A&M. So this is going to help those teams on the far west periphery of the SEC that have kind of struggled of late. And those two teams primarily to me are Arkansas and Mizzou. And also, this would potentially go to a vote at some point with with all the teams in the SEC. Do you see Texas and OU getting the votes that they need? Yes, absolutely. I don't think there will be um, uh, any roadblock in front of them from the SEC standpoint. Now, when we talk about state legislatures and, and, and things like that in Oklahoma and even Texas, obviously, maybe some people will try to throw legalese around to get this thing blocked, but I, I don't think there will be enough uh, to have that happen. Oklahoma and Texas, if the SEC votes, will get in. Maybe A&M abstains or votes against, but again, they need only 11 of the 14 votes to be approved in the SEC. I think at the end of the day, it'll be 14-0, and those two teams will join the conference. When do you think we could actually see this process starting? It could be going on right as we're talking. I mean, it could happen any moment. They could vote at any moment and have this happen. But I'm told that the soonest, obviously, it could happen this week. Not so certain it will happen this week. It's just a matter of how quickly they want to get this done and maybe avoid some of those the legal things going on where some people, people are going to be spending so much on lawyers to stop Texas and OU from leaving those states and joining the SEC. So I think the quicker the SEC reacts to this and gets it done, the better for the SEC and also for any potential roadblocks getting in the way of Texas and OU. But having said that, they're going to zoom past all that and get it done. I think the bigger question here that is there on everybody's mind is when do Texas and OU start playing in the yeah. SEC? That, that was exactly going to be my next question. <laughs> do, do you have any guesses? I, I think it could happen as soon as 2022 or 2023. Um, I know that they, uh, they say they want to go through this current contract through 2025, but the moment we see other schools examining within the Big 12, other schools within the Big 12 examining whether to leave or not, and maybe we hear about West Virginia looking at ACC or maybe Iowa State's going to the Big 10, that will open the door for Texas and OU to leave sooner than later because they won't have to worry about financial penalty or anything going on in courts or anything like that. So if the Big 12 starts to look like it's going to dissolve, they could probably jump almost immediately. And immediately in this time frame, there's so many things to do, would be 2022. I, I think that's a least likely scenario um, with the second least likely actually being 2025. So I think the best best point here, I guess what I'm trying to say, is 2023 or 2024 look like the best options. All right. And while I have you, by the way, just want to get your take on Arkansas and and going into another year under Sam Pittman. Just what's your outlook on this this team? Well, it's, they're going to go as far as K.J. Jefferson takes them at quarterback. If he can really pick up where Felipe Franks did last year and make that offense maybe even a little bit more dynamic with his feet, I think they're going to be pretty good offensively. 
but I got to see that in the first few weeks of the season from him. The defense will be just fine. I think Perry Odom's done a masterful job there. They play a lot of zone, which has worked out masterfully in the SEC because more teams are throwing the ball than ever and has really helped them defensively to kind of hide some of their weaknesses. But offensively, if K.J. Jefferson can be a little bit more dynamic than Felipe Franks last year, I think this is an Arkansas team that can challenge and get into a bowl.